Hello everyone, my name is Taehyuk Kim. Today I'll talk about RB buzzer to discover input, valida invalidation, uh, input validation bugs in robotic vehicles via control guided testing. So first let me introduce what is the robotic vehicle. Robotic vehicle is a type of a cyber physical system interacting with the physical world. There are various types of vehicles such as uh, aerial and ground vehicles and they can be used in the various purposes, such as delivery. However, robotic vehicles have many security issues, which can lead to crash into the crowd and pro uh, in, or protected, in protected places and even injuring people. And then before we discuss the security issues, let me introduce how robotic vehicles work. Uh, there is a robotic vehicle system, and uh, it consists of four key modules, such as mission module to handle command sent from the ground control station, and the sensor module to ob observe the uh, vehicle's physical state, and then controller, which is the heart of the robotic vehicle system to stabilize the movement around the six degrees of freedom. And then this, this controls the mechanical motors. And then these modules generate the propulsive forces based on the control aerodynamics of, of a, a vehicle and the physics and control theory. Then they, they adjust the propulsive forces according to the observed vehicle state in six degrees, degrees of freedom. Then let's assume the six degrees of freedom controller and how much they are complex. So there is a six degree of freedom and then each degree is controlled by one cascading controller. As an example of uh, x-axis cascading controller, uh, it, uh, inside of this cascading controller, there are three cascaded primitive controllers and then the operation of such controllers are determined by control parameters or controller module, mission module, and the sensor module. And then there are, uh, there are hundreds of, of control parameters for those modules, and then they are dynamically configurable by ground control station. However, this convenient control uh, interface opens up the new security hole. Then let me introduce such a secret holes. But before I talk about my, uh, our uh, new secret hole, let me summarize the two existing secret holes. Uh, first one is physical attacks, such as sensor spoofing. Uh, as an example, during a normal flight, uh, if there is an attacker who gen generates noise to mislead the sensor, a uh, robotic vehicle start to show physical disturbance. At the end, it causes severe injuries. Fortunately, this can be mitigated by control-based detection or filter mechanism. And then the other one is software, traditional software box, and then such as a uh, buffer overflow. Uh, since a pro control program is also a type of a program, it inevitably has a uh, software box. And each exploitation also cause six degree of freedom controllers to malfunction. We call this type of box as a syntactic box. And then fortunately, this, is, this can be also mitigated by program budging and hardening. And in this work, we introduce a new type of a semantic box instead of a syntactic box. We call this bug as a control semantic box. And then this is new and has not, much, has not received much attention and then is not dependable with the above approaches. So then let's dig into control semantic box. So, so this is exploitable by sending a malicious parameter changing command. And then this is possible because GCS to vehicle communication such as bubbling is not such a secure. And then it causes at least one control to malfunction. And then 
we believe that this is quite meaningful to even to attackers due to the following three reasons. First of all, it is remotely triggerable by single malicious control parameter change command. Hence, it leaves minimum footprint. Second, it does not rely on previous attack model, such as sensor spoofing, code injection, and Trojan exploits. Finally, it is launchable even after the program is hardened against the traditional exploits. <clears throat> then let's talk about the nature of this semantic, control semantic box. So there's a parameter P1, and then an attacker may try to manipulate this P1 value with uh, some uh, invalid range that is within the, some red range. However, uh, usually control, uh, control program usually have uh, some defense mechanism to protect such red range uh, red range values. Therefore, such trial usually uh, prevented by built-in defense mechanisms. And then, as a result, actually robot vehicles simply uh, fly normally, and then it is similar. It is similar to a valid value setting. So, in this case, if we set a value within a green range, which is the two valley range, it does not cause any problem in physical operation. However, if an attacker uh, manipulated this P1 value uh, with a value within the uh, pink range, then it, a robotic vehicle starts to show physical disturbance. And despite of this riskness, it, is, it, it passes through the built-in defense because it is within the permitted range. So in this context, our goal is that we want to sh shrink the, this uh, permitted input range into the true valid range denoted as a green range. And then also this is not only for single parameter, but also it must be done with the other hundreds of control parameters. <clears throat> also, we have observed that wind effect actually cause uh, cause affect the green range, I mean the true valley range. So in this case, suppose there is a parameter P and it is set as a denoted uh, uh, value. And in this context, without any uh, wind, it does not cause any problem in physical operation. However, if there is a wind effect such as a strong wind, its invalid value will be expanded and then true valid range will be shrunken. So therefore, we should, we should also consider this wind effect during the test. So to find this control semantic box, we, 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 uh, we can fudge the control program. And then, however, there are two main challenges. First one is how to detect a bad control pro program run. And then, is it true that program crash can indicate a bad traditional program run. However, this is not applicable to the con bad control program run. Uh, this is because a true indicator of a, control, a bad control run is not program crash, actually physical console instability. As a supportive example, Suppose a control program is exploited by, let's say, control semantic box. Even if so, a control program will still keep, will keep running without any program crash. In this context, control theory comes to the rescue. So we consider console instability, control instability as a bad control program run. And then we, there are two types of non-transient divergence that is considered as a control instability. First one is the divergence between reference state and observed state. Reference state indicates a desired physical operation. On the other hand, observed state indicates a actual physical operation. If, if there is a large and persistent divergence between two states, a uh, robotic vehicle start to show severe control instability, as you can see in the figure. 
And then the other type is uh, divergence between reference state and mission. And then if there is a large and persistent divergence between two, between two states, uh, robotic vehicle cannot track the uh, trajectory. Uh, trajectory. <clears throat> Therefore, we, we found that actually with the cont standard control properties and the formula, it, it, is possible that, it is possible to detect such non-transient divergences. So the other, <clears throat> the other challenge is how to pose the control programs, uh, how to pose the control loops. Actually, uh, cyber physical systems such as robotic vehicle system uh, should iteratively learn the control loops to stabilize the physical operation. In this, in, uh, for this purpose, there are several issues. First one is safety. So specifically, we may not want to make real vehicles crash due to uh, safety issues. To solve this problem, we leverage a high fidelity simulator, which provides a virtual physical world. This enables us to budge control loops safely. The other one is efficiency. In fact, there is a large testing input space. Specifically, there are hundreds of control parameters and a large value range for each parameter, and there is a wind effect. All of those factors must be considered during the test. To overcome this issue, we propose a control-guided feedback-directed approach. This is based on the, some control property that we will talk about in the couple of slides. So here is the overview of RB budget, and there is a target program, target binary program, and then it will interact with the simulator, and then it will send and receive and uh, sensor input and motor output. This setting enables us to execute control loops safely, and then there will be a, a ground, real ground control station software, GCS software, and then it is connected to the target program, and then it will send some control command while receiving the control state of the target program. And here, we put and connect our control-guided tester, and then inside of this tester, there's a control instability detector to detect a bad control program run. And then this is possible because uh, uh, by monitoring the control state. And then there, uh, depending on this detection result, the control-guided input mutator will mutate the value of a parameter and then wind configuration. This enables us to achieve the high efficiency in testing. So let me, intro let me explain how this control-guided tester works with, uh, uh, with a simplified single-parameter mutation example. So let's start with testing with uh, velocity control gain parameter with value 1. <coughs> if we test it with this value and with parameter, then we can observe the two related physical operation. First one is desired velocity drawn as a gray, gray line and the actual velocity drawn as an orange line. And then as you can see in the figure, the actual velocity tracks the desired velocity very well. It means that there is no control instability. Then we can maybe test the more debated value, such as 6, and then as described in the figure, there is a control instability. Then we can test the value between 1 and 6. But in this case, we are not sure whether there is a uh, where the control instability happens or not, but we can pre predict that values larger than 6 cause control instability. This is based on the, our monotonic control property, increasing or decreasing the value of a control parameter will maintain or intensify the control instability. 
<coughs> then we can keep mutating the input value uh, while efficiently reducing the input space. So here is the evaluation result. We test with autopilot and px which are the most two popular open source program. And we found 89 bugs. And then <coughs> during the eight days of testing, out of them, actually we come to all of the cases. And independently, the uh, eight cases were compiled by developers, and the seven cases were patched by developers until now. And then we also noted that we use open source program only to obtain the ground truth, but with RB Puzzle doesn't require source code. And then, so as you can see in, uh, in this uh, table, there is a list of, large list of uh, vulnerable parameters. It is bound from the other pilot. Actually, there is more for PX4. And then according to the value of each parameter, it shows different uh, physical impacts, such as crash and, or deviation from the trajectory. Let me introduce two concrete uh, control semantic bug exploitation. First one is to control the maximum moral power. And then if it is set as a value within a pink range, it starts to show severe console instability. This is because it's, uh, although sometimes it's necessary to generate the maximum power of a motor, but due to the, this limited maximum motor power, it cannot generate such maximum power. And the, the other parameter is uh, the uh, responsible for low angular control gain. And then if this value is, uh, this value is within the left pink range, it does, it, uh, a lower vehicle will fail to track the trajectory, as you can see in the figure. So in summary, we introduced uh, new types of control semantic box by sending a, it is achievable, it, it is exploitable by sending a malicious parameter changing command. And then to discover this control semantic bug, we propose a uh, buzzer, a cyber physical system buzzing tool, and then this system perform control guided detection of bad control program none by detecting generic control instability properties, and it performs a safe and efficient control loop budging by leveraging a high fidelity simulator and control property. As a result, we found 89 bugs from the autopilot and the PX4. So is there any question? Thanks, that was uh, quite interesting. Can you, can you maybe tell me um, to which degree would these bugs, as you call them, be specific to the physical process? So you, you found this in controller software. Is that now specific to a specific drone, or is this, would this be a range or bug, or as you call it, that would essentially apply to, to a number of different drones that would run with the same software? Is this like a problem that is, are these values specifically related to the drone model? I mean, if you say 0 0.8 is the minimal thrust, I can have maximal thrust that I can have. Maybe I have a different drone which has a different motor, and then it's a different value, no? To which degree is this like a, a bug that I can fix in the con general control software? Uh, I'm sorry, can you repeat that? OK, sorry. Uh, these bugs that you filed with the developers, you said you found 90 bugs or something like this? That that you filed with the developers? So I, I found 89. Yes. Yes. But, but these are specific for one model of the drone, or this would be a bug which, is specific, uh, which would be in general for the controller software, which could also apply to different drones? Uh, maybe you are talking about the whether this bug is found from the, some specific model. Is that correct? Yeah, uh, yes. uh, yeah, I'm wondering if this applies to one specific model of the drone, or let's say you have whatever, drone model one and drone model 10 or whatever, which is much newer. Would this bug be the, you know, you now say that the maximal thrust has to be at least 0 0.8 of something. Is this the case for both model one and model 10 of the drone, or is this something that is specific to one drone? I'm wondering how, how generic these bugs are, or these are super specific. Uh, Based on my, my understanding, I, I believe your question is that 
uh, whether I found such bugs from the autopilot. And then actually autopilot or PX4 actually support a lot of models according to the combination of some the other models and then and then also mathematical model also could be different. So it means that autopilot support a lot of many variety of models. But in my case, I actually test with one specific model that is uh, specifically 3DR something, uh, 3DR uh, quadrotor. Actually, this is the default uh, model for testing. And then I found this box from, uh, from the such a model. But, <clears throat> but, and then also by, is it also true that my result only come, uh, found from the, uh, that default model? But, I, I believe our, my design is uh, generic enough, so it, it, it is possible to find a uh, box from the other, other uh, control models. Okay, thank you. And Thanks. Okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah, we'll uh, a follow-up question if there's no one else. Uh, yes, if you would like to leave, it's the end of the session, but we can keep discussing as well, if you would prefer. Go ahead. Well, maybe I'll do it offline, if there's no one else. Thank you. All right, let's thank all of our speakers again. Uh, and thank you.